In our last uh, video lecture, we talked about the different types of bone cells and um, how they differ in their maintenance of bone or their repair of bone or the breaking down of bone. So now we'll talk about the different types of bone that are made by osteoblasts. And one of them is woven bone. Woven bone is a very thin, fragile, early type of bone that will be um, formed early in fetal development or when you um, are repairing a fracture as that site is rebuilt. Um, the early bone is woven bone. So it's a more fragile bone. It's not something that can withstand a lot of stress or pressure, but um, eventually that woven bone will be converted to spongy bone or compact bone, which has a lot more strength and durability. So we'll talk about that a little bit more, um, and I'll show you some pictures too in some future slides. So we see this type of bone, woven bone, as a type of bone present during fractures and something we call remodeling. And if you think about what remodeling means that in your home, it means tearing down the old kitchen cupboards and putting up new cupboards. Same thing happens with our skeleton. We have osteoclasts that remove and resorb old bone and then osteoblasts will build new bone. New bone. So if you can think that in a healthy person it's safe to assume that about every 10 years we have a brand new skeleton. And we talked about that with skin, that we shed off our skin and replace it with new skin every 30 days. So definitely the skeleton takes a lot longer for us to completely remodel our skeleton, but about every 10 years in people under the age of 30. So um, cancellous bone is another name of that is spongy bone. We find this in the center of flat bones. As we can see here, this is a flat bone of the skull. It contains these tiny fibers of bone, which will give it a spongy appearance. We also find it on the ends of our long bones. In the epiphyses, we can see these tiny fibers of bone. So what makes spongy bone spongy in appearance are these fibers, which are called trabeculae. So you might want to highlight this term here. Trabeculae are these uh, thin fibers of bone that give spongy bone its spongy appearance. But these trabeculae um, align themselves along lines of stress. So what we see here, these blue lines, show how the trabeculae align themselves with, say, weight-bearing exercise. For example, if someone was a, a walker or a runner, their trabeculae, the osteoblasts, would be stimulated along these lines of stress to build trabeculae. So the trabeculae will line up along that stress line. So the trabeculae are layers of bone, solid bone here, that are laid down in these circular layers which are called lamellae. And within the lamellae are the osteoblasts that were once, or that are now converted to osteocytes that lie in this hardened matrix. Remember, the osteocytes are simply osteoblasts that have matured as the matrix, the bone tissue around it, hardened. So here we can see there's osteoclasts on the surface as well. So in these spaces that are not near not lines of stress, we can see that there's not as much trabeculae there. So osteoclasts will break down the bone material there while maintaining the, 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 bone, the trabeculae with the <clears throat> osteocytes or building more bone tissue on top of the trabeculae when there's weight-bearing exercises or stress placed on the bone. So what we find in the spongy bone spaces is red marrow and red marrow contains those blood cells which are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So we will always find that in these spongy bone spaces here at the ends of our long bones as well as in the flat bones of the skull, the sternum, the hip. So looking at compact bone now, compact bone is solid bone. We don't see these wispy fibers, these trabeculae. We see solid layers of bone. Again, layers of bone are called lamellae, but it's solid bone tissue. So that's what makes it compact. Compact means very dense, full of bone matrix with no spaces other than these tiny canals where we see red blood, or I'm sorry, we see um, blood vessels and nerves running through the center. So if we focus in on one of these circular pieces here that lie within compact bone, this is in the edges of our long bones is where we find this compact bone. So we're looking here just on the edge is what this is focusing in on here. <clears throat> so if we focus on one of these circular pieces here, the entire piece is called an osteon. 
So this whole unit of different circular layers is called an osteon. And each layer of bone <coughs> excuse me, is called a lamella. So more than one we call a we call lamellae. We put an E on the end. If it just is one, then we call it a lamella. But think of lamella layer. There's three L's in the word lamella, and think of it starting with the word L for layer. <clears throat> so these are layers of compact bone, layers of matrix. So that's this is calcium and collagen and proteoglycans, um, phosphate, calcium phosphate, providing hardness and flexibility. And then these tiny little spots here along the lamellae are osteocytes that were trapped in those cavities, which we call lacuna, when that matrix hardened. So the osteocytes will maintain this bone. So just because it's hardened doesn't mean it's no longer living. It's still a living tissue because it has a blood supply, it has nerves, and these cells can survive in this hardened bone because of those tiny extensions they have. Recall that those are called canaliculi. So if you look down here, you can see the osteocytes with the purple nuclei and these extensions, these cellular processes, how they communicate with one another, which are called the canaliculi. So we see several different layers here. We see four layers, four lamella here that are shown with the blood vessels and the nerve in the inside, this inner um, supply here of blood and nervous sensation is called the haversion canal. So the hole in the center of each osteon is called a haversion canal. And then there's also uh, canals that run sideways through this bone, which this is called a Volksmann or perforating canal. This is what connects the general blood supply to the bone with each osteon. So each osteon is actually connected to one another through these haversion or perforating canals that run sideways through the bone. So here we can see a, a actual scanning electron micrograph showing the surface of bone. You can see the tiny little cavities which would be called lacuna. We can see the haversion canal, this hole in the center. And in this one, this is a tissue slide of compact bone. You can see the haversion canal. You can see each dark spot is an osteocyte in a lacuna. And you can see the hazy, faint little lines extending away from the osteocytes, which would be the canaliculi. So lots of terminology here. I recommend you know going over that, printing off a blank copy of this picture. We have one in the PowerPoint for lab. There's also a picture of an osteon model in our lab folder. I would recommend printing that off and practicing labeling with the terms like lamella, lacuna, osteocyte, canaliculi, osteon, haversion canal, Volksmann's canal, and that'll get you ready for the lab exam. For our purposes in lecture, you need to know the function of these structures. Here's another tissue view of some of the structures. Here we can see a Volksmann's canal connecting two osteons together. And remember the one running down the center of each osteon is called a haversion canal. And again you can see the hazy canaliculi, the little extensions coming off of the osteocytes that help those cells communicate with one another in this hardened bone matrix. And that concludes our discussion of the different types of bone. We'll pick up next time with bone development.